and you take control of the word that you are about to deliver to your people. Father God, we thank and we praise you for the leadership of this great church. We ask in Jesus' name that you touch each and every individual that stands before you right here and right now. And we ask that you bless us all according to your will and not ours. Father God, we thank you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You know, as I was listening to all of the wonderful testimonies and listening to everyone speak on the goodness of God this morning, you know, it, it, it brought me to that point that Bishop started on last week, abundant living. Living our lives more abundantly. Wow. And so what we're going to do this morning for just a short period of time, we are going to stay right on track to the message that Bishop started on last week. It is going to be the focus of today, an abundant life, abundant living, and living your life more abundantly. Oh, come on, somebody. Amen. I might not get a whole lot of amens this morning. Because I'm going to tell the truth. And what I mean when I say that is that when you move self out of the way and you allow God to take control, sometimes God has a tendency to let us know things that we ain't trying to receive. Sometimes God has a way of telling us some things that we don't want to hear. Sometimes God has a tendency of doing things in our life that we don't want to accept. But I will say this, that in order to live your life more abundantly, you're going to have to listen to no one else but God. Come on now. That's right. That's right. That's right. Now, John 10.10 says, that the thief, the thief comes not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Now, the series that we are beginning today is focusing on, as I said a few moments ago, an abundant life, abundant living, and living your life more abundantly. If I just was forced to put a title on this message this morning, I would come up with something along the lines of, God provides all of the above. Mm -hmm. All of yes. the above. Now, my question to you is, how are you living? My question to you is, how are you living? Now, when we look <laughs> at living our lives more abundantly, first, before I get into the meat of today's message, I want to take a look at four points before we get into God's purpose for our lives. I want to take a look at living our lives more abundantly from today's society. Mm -hmm. I want to take a look at living our lives more abundantly based on the natural man. Uh -huh. I want to take <laughs> a few moments to take a look at living our lives more abundantly based on Christian folks. And I want to take a moment to focus on living our lives God's way. Uh -huh. Now, when we look at living our lives based on today's society, many of us know that an abundant life based on today's society is, hmm, I don't know, uh, a nice job, uh -huh. having a nice home. You know, uh, uh, let's see, let's see. When we live our lives according to today's society, we gotta have a pocket full of money. Uh -huh. If we ain't got a pocket full of money, a nice house, and a good job, we don't feel like we're living our lives worth nothing. That's it. When you look at man's point of view, I might duck, but 
but I will tell you anyway. We live our lives according to that thing called money, as we know. We live our lives to having that wife. That's abundant living based on man. For some of us, we live our lives and it's got to be abundant based on having a girlfriend too. Some of us got to have a nice home, our wives or the young ladies got to have a man, a husband, a boyfriend. That's abundant living based on today's natural man. Uh -huh. If we don't have those things, then we don't feel like we're living our lives accordingly. Uh -huh. And oh my goodness, what about Christian folks? When we as Christian folks want to look at living our lives more abundantly, we look at things like, well, I go to church every Sunday. Mm -hmm. I attend Sunday school on Sunday mornings. Sometimes throughout the week, I might attend a Bible study or two. Uh -huh. Oh, don't let me forget I sang in the choir. So if we do all of those things, abundant life is, at that point for some Christian folks is, okay, God, now what you gonna do for me? Uh-huh. You owe me something. No. Imagine that. Imagine Christian folks coming into the house of the Lord saying, God, you owe me something. Look out. But believe it or not, the way some people see living our lives abundantly, we always have our hand out. That's right. What can you do for me? Preach. Ooh. See, I told you, I can get a whole lot of amens today because I'm telling the truth. <laughs> Tell the truth. I done wiped Elder Kevin out the way. Tell it. And the Lord has stepped in. Uh -huh. yeah. mm -hmm. Before I get into the meat of living life according to God's way more abundantly, let me just throw this at you. In order to do so, expect a Solomon experience. Uh -huh. I'm gonna say that again, so y'all might get it in the parking lot. In order to live life more abundantly according to God's way, yeah. Expect a Solomon experience. Uh -huh. Come on, Come on. See, some of y'all might not Come understand on. what I'm talking about, but if you open the word of yeah. God, yeah. God will let you know that he is going to give you a Solomon experience. Uh -huh. Oh, that's the word. That's the word. They got nothing to do with Elder Kevin. Ooh. <sighs> My goodness. Now, according to the word of God in 1010, as we read before, the thief comes not to do anything else but kill, steal, and destroy. Uh -huh. Let me say that God desires biblical abundance in our lives. Mm -hmm. And he desires that through faith. Amen. In order for us to have that abundant living, we have to have a level of faith. Or we have to have a true level of faith. Faith without works is dead. We all know that. So if we have a level of faith, then we begin to put that level of faith to work. That's right. That means we will show. It will show. See, see, I, I, I talk about it on the air all the time. I always give our listeners an opportunity to do something. And one of the things that I tell them to do is I will tell them to go stand in the mirror. Mm. I will say, look at yourself. And I say, repeat after me these words. Close your eyes for just a moment. Everyone, close your eyes for just a moment. And I want you to repeat after me. Sometimes the only Jesus that people see Sometimes the only Jesus that people see is the Jesus in me. Is the Jesus in me. Hallelujah. Oh my goodness. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes we might get it a little twisted. Sometimes we might feel as though in order to have an abundant life, we have to have all of these uh, hmm, fancy cars and all these material things that people enjoy as they go on throughout the day. The last I checked, not one of those things is going to go with you into the kingdom of heaven. 
The last I checked, you ain't taking nothing with you when you enter into those heavenly gates. So everything that we are uh, laying out in today's world, oh, don't you touch my car? I need that outfit. I gotta go to church Sunday. All that fancy stuff that you're spending your money on is not going to get you into heaven. It is not going to allow you to receive the abundant life that I'm getting ready to tell you about. Because in order for us to receive that abundant living, the only way that we can and will receive it is by the grace of God. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's right. Amen. God is the only one that can. He is the only one that will That's right. provide abundant living. I said before, I said the title is God Provides All of the Above. Amen. So when we surrender to the will of God, when we let go and let God have his way, when we let go and let God have his way, it says that the desires of our hearts it says in his word. Now, this ain't got nothing to do with it on the camera. You can open your Bible and find it. If you, ain't, if you don't know where it's at, come to Bible study. Amen. Come to Sunday school. Amen. We'll show you where it is. Call me. If I don't know where to find it, I'll find it for you. I'll just tell you to hold on for a minute. Amen. Because that's what we do when we want to receive what it is that God has in store. Mm -hmm. Now, as I said, God desires a biblical abundance in our lives through faith. Above all, his prosperity, body, mind, soul, spirit, emotions, relationship, God has it all covered. Yeah. Everything we need, God can provide for you. Amen. Jesus said that he came to do what? Give life. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I'm getting there. I won't be here before you long, but I feel the spirit of the Lord saying, do this, not that. So I have to be obedient to what he's telling me to do. Jesus said, come, that I have come to give life. And, 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 and when you think about what Jesus decided to do, he didn't just come to give life. <laughs> he came to give a supernatural experience. He came to give more than just life. He came right. to give an, uh, an, an extraordinary experience for each and every one of his people. But he came to give it in fullness. He came to give it abundantly. He came to give it with prosperity. See, I'm, oh, I, I got to say that sometimes when we look at someone who is not living a Christian life, and they look at Christian folk, those that have made a decision to give their life to Christ. They look at us like we're not supposed to have anything. And if we do, we're supposed to give it to them. Yeah. Let me say it again. Say it again. <laughs> they look at us like we're not supposed to have anything. That's right. And they're supposed to have everything, but if we do have it, we're supposed to give it to them. <laughs> I, 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 I'm a little confused because God told me in his word that we are supposed to have life and we're supposed to have it more abundant. Oh, now, now somebody needs to understand what the word abundant is. Uh -huh. Abundant means like overwhelming. More than enough. Uh -huh. More than enough. Yeah. See, some of us we need to understand that when you live an abundant life, you are living a life that is overflowing. So why is it that we, as Christian folks, shouldn't have anything, but the folks that ain't living their life in a Christ-like way should have everything? I don't understand. Some, I'm missing something here. And somebody's going to have to help me out this morning because I believe in my spirit that my word of God says that when we live for God, yeah. we will live life more abundantly. Abundant. Yeah. Okay, 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 I'm getting there, I'm getting there. Now, it says that, but life should be filled with fullness, abundance, and prosperity. Yes. On the other hand, uh -huh. as I just said, the enemy comes only to do what? Steal. Okay, so help me understand. 
See, I'm going to get like Bishop this morning. I might start treaching. Okay. Now, 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 now. It says the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. The line here has been clearly drawn. On one side is God with goodness, with life, plenty of that that is necessary to receive abundant living. Yeah. On the other side, we have the enemy, hmm. the oppressed, the disappointed, the angry. Oh my goodness. But they are yet supposed to have everything. And we are supposed to have nothing. Yeah. <sighs> it says an abundant life. An abundant life yeah. is God's prosperity. Amen? Amen. Y'all follow me? Amen. God's prosperity. God's covenant is for us to have this abundant life that I'm speaking. That's right. From the very, 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 very beginning of time, Scripture shows us that God wanted us to be happy. He wanted us to be prosperous. God bless you. He wanted us to be prosperous. Now, if we're not supposed to have anything based on what the enemy is saying, how is it that God is telling us that we should have everything? Uh -huh. So who are we going to believe? Oh, God. Oh, my God. I believe God. Who are we going to believe? Uh -huh. Who is it that we're going to receive? Now, we're all here today saying that we are ready, willing, and able to give our life to Christ. Amen. We are ready to submit to his every will and his every calling. So, but yet we are going to believe what the enemy has to say about our lives. Amen. We're going to believe that we should have a nice home. Right. We're going to believe that we should have money in the bank. We're going to believe that we should be divorced from our lives. We're going to believe that we should be angry, upset, and, and oh my goodness, and let the devil have a stronghold in our life. Yeah. We're supposed to receive that. Uh -uh. And if we don't, Not here. the enemy got an attitude. Uh -huh. Let me tell you what the enemy can do. Oh, no, I better, I better hold on to that until later. <laughs> now, when we make a decision to surrender to the will of God, and I, I want you, if you want to, get your pants out because I have a few scriptures that you might need to take home and you to hold on to. Because as I said before, this ain't got nothing to do with Elder Kevin. I prayed that God will move me out of the way. Now, 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 in, in 3 John, 3 John, it's only one chapter. It ain't that hard to find. Oh, 1 and 2, it says, Beloved, I wish above all things I wish above, y'all help me out, all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prosper. Above all things that we prosper. Now God said in his word in 3 John, he says that we should have all things and he has every intention to allow his people to prosper. That's it. Every intention. Yeah. Now this is way back when. I can take you back to Genesis if you need a little more uh -huh. concrete information. I can give you that too. Just uh -huh. give me a minute. <laughs> and it says also, I want to take you to the book of Job. See, a lot of us overlook that book from time to time. Okay? We, 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 we overlook that from time to time. Job, second chapter, verse 26. See, it's one thing that I am learning through ministry. When, 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 when Bishop or someone calls and says, hey, guess what? I need you to share a word. It makes us as ministers do our homework. All right. Amen. It makes us study the word of God. Oh, I know you're it, right. makes us, it makes us wake up with the attitude of gratitude because we know that if God is in control, we are going to give his people what he anticipates. That's right. That's right. That's it. You're preaching now. So that, you know what, when I, I, I said myself last night, I said, oh, Pastor Paul said, well, you know you're preaching tomorrow. I said, no, I ain't doing nothing. God, 
is doing everything. Because if you left it up to me, I'll be trying to steer you the wrong way. I'll be having you go all the way over there somewhere to do some things that you ain't got no business doing. But when God is in control, when God takes control, I don't have to worry about anything. Because I can get up here with an agenda, but that agenda immediately gets wiped out. And God is in control to do what it is that he said needs to be done. And that's give his people a word from him and allow them to live life more Abundant. Hey, Come on. Come on. See, I figured out that I don't have to get up here and scream and shout. Right, oh, right, right. I don't have to get up here and run all up and down the aisle oh, in order to give you what God has all given right. me. Oh, all right. All right. Because a lot of times I get distracted. I might think I'm going to fall. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> see, I don't know about you, but see me, I have a tendency to trip over my own two feet. <laughs> so if I don't let God take control, we're in trouble. That's right. You're right, man. Hey, come on. Preaching now. According as his divine, divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory. At 2 Peter 1 and 3. Think about that scripture. Think about that scripture. Now when we look at God's prosperity, we all know that from the very beginning of time, God intended for his people to live a life of abundancy. Amen? Amen? amen. amen. Y'all with me? If I get a few amens, I'll be down in a minute. Amen. Just so you know. I just want to make sure I ain't preaching to myself. God had this word intended for me and you. All right. Now, I'm going to let you, let you all know that when we look at living our lives more abundantly and we look at it as receiving a Solomon experience, when we look at living our lives in a Christ-like way, receiving what God has in store for us, taking the visions and the missions and allowing God to use us in those ways that he sees fit, we can't do anything but live our lives more abundantly. Amen. That's right. See, a lot of times we want to take control of the situation and we allow the natural man to set in. Men, we tend to look at a pretty woman, got a wife at home. No. I'm gonna talk about it now. I'm gonna tell the truth. Tell women. Tell women. But God says that when you find now this is in his word, and I do it over Kevin. When you find a wife, you find a so that means everything else is obsolete. Uh -huh. It's not necessary. But I will say this, if you allow the natural man to yeah. step up and yeah. take control. Your abundant living has been crushed. Yeah. Because God can and will provide your every need. But when we try to take control of the situation, man steps in, gets in the way, and messes everything up. Come on now. Amen. I'm a witness. I know I've been there. Hallelujah. I honor my wife. I don't care what nobody has to say about her. Amen. I don't care who thinks she don't look as good as your description or the way you want her to look. Right, right. To me, when a man finds a wife, oh, find a good thing. I'm good. With God. I got favor. All right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> the party is over on this side. It's just beginning it on this side. side. Come on now. <laughs> See, yeah. I'm gonna tell you something. I'm gonna be, <laughs> I'm gonna be the oldest newlywed you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be married 30 years and people talk about I just got married yesterday. <laughs> oh my goodness. Now, now, moving on with abundant living and abundant life. And abundant life means human worth. And abundant life means human worth. Christ came to earth in defense of life. By his words and actions, he opposed anything, force or person, that might diminish it. So he opposed the enemy's stronghold in our lives. He opposed the addiction. He opposed the problem. He opposed the problems, the downfalls, the setbacks, the strongholds. He made it clear in his word that we no longer have to give in to these things that hold us back and keep us down. 
God had a plan for our life to live life more abundantly from the very beginning. Why is it that we just can't see that and live accordingly? Amen. See, we are too busy trying to take control. Hold on, God, I got this. <laughs> and then once we take control, nine times out of ten, we mess it up. I know I was good at it. Okay, I, I, I'm let me retract. I was a professional. I, I wasn't just good at it. I was a professional. Pushing God aside, letting them know, hey, I got this. And every time I try to step up to the forefront and let the natural man set in, I mess things up. I'm realizing quick, fast, and in a hurry that if it ain't God's way, it ain't no way. I got a few amens over there. If it ain't God's way, it ain't no way. Amen. 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 Now we get down to the meat. Oh, you thought you were already there, huh? <laughs> See, God had a plan from the very beginning. And, 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 and as I said when I first got up here, we look at things in a way that, 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 that we want to act as if living an abundant life based on today's society. I'm just giving you a recap. Based on today's society, we think that living an abundant life is having a good job, maybe having a nice car, maybe having a nice home. That's living an abundant life based on today's society. Uh -huh. Living an abundant life based on man, the natural man. Mm, that means we might have a wife, a bank account, a girlfriend, uh -huh. and so on. See, but that's not living an abundant life. Right, right. Come on, somebody. Right. Somebody Amen. hears me. Amen. Living an abundant life based on Christian folk. Mm -hmm. So-called Christian folk. All right. All right. Okay? Now, I have no, no, I cannot have anything to do with what you do. Amen. But I know for a fact that many people, as I cross their pathway of life, has continued to keep me stuck way back when, when they used to call me things that they don't call me anymore, uh -huh. when they used to call me things that I don't even allow or even answer to anymore. Uh -huh. See, my, my, I heard my wife tell me one day, he has given you a new name. I heard her tell me one day, he has made you a new creature. See, so what they call me, and they used to call me back then, so those people that find it hard to understand that I'm living a life in a Christ-like way, they want to keep me stuck way back when. You know, when I was out in the streets doing drugs, when I was trying to see how quick I can get in your pocket, when I, can tr when I was trying to figure out what, what the club goes at two, it's got to be one open to three. I wanted to be there. But I'm finding out that when you give your life to Christ and you surrender to the will of God, many people want to keep you stuck in the past. And if they can accomplish that mission, guess what? <sighs> that abundant living that we so gratefully deserve and should receive based on God's word will not happen. We can believe that we're going to be abundant if we go out there to the club tonight and be in church in the morning and we want to. Uh -huh. We can believe that fornicating today and then going home and praying to God tonight is going to save our soul if you want to. Come on now. You can believe that if you send a little message over to little sister over there and you got a wife sitting next to you and you're going to leave and live an abundant life, uh-uh, it ain't going to happen. Amen. Oh. Amen. It ain't going to happen. God had a plan for our lives from the very beginning, and it was to live our lives more abundantly. But in order for us to do that, I heard Pastor Boone talk about it this morning. God sent his only begotten son to die on Calvary's cross for whose sins? Our sins. Our sins. But then God had, in order for his word to come to pass, he had to die on that cross. He had to suck up all of our sins and throw them out in the seat of forgetfulness. Uh -huh. And he did just that. So he did his part. Uh -huh. And then before God, before Jesus had to leave, what did he do? He said, I have to leave you, but I will leave you with a comforter. Yes. The comforter is the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. See, a lot of us want to sugarcoat it and say the Holy Spirit. That's okay with me. 
But it's the Holy Ghost because you know why we do that? Because we don't we don't want to accept the word ghost. Ooh, that's kind of scary. We don't want to accept that. But let me tell you something. When before Jesus left, He said, "I will leave you with a Comforter, and that will be the Holy Ghost." Now, correct me if I'm wrong. God sent His only begotten Son, Jesus. Jesus had to do what? Down the cross, and then He left. He had to go. But before he left, he left us with a comforter. Why is it that we always tend to forget about the Holy Ghost to get to Jesus, to get to God, to get to heaven? All right. All right. Somebody help me understand. Why is it that we bypass our direct link to Jesus and call ourselves Christian and want to get to heaven? All right. If we're paying attention to God's word, we have to receive the Holy Ghost. Come on now. You preach it. We have to receive the Holy Ghost to live our life more uh -huh. abundantly. Uh -huh. Well, how do you do that? Somebody say, well, how do you do that, Elder Clay? I'll be glad to tell you. You're going to have to share all some stuff. Uh -huh. You're going to have to let some stuff go. Uh -huh. You're going to have to stop fornicating. You're going to have to stop lying, cheating, and stealing. You're going to have to start attending some Sunday schools and Bible studies. you got to open your word to God. Yeah. Because, see, I can't save you. Amen. Amen. Oh, my goodness. Amen. Amen. Bishop can't save you. Amen. Pastor Bolton can't save you. Can't save you. Mm -hmm. Your wife, your boyfriend, your husband, your friend. <coughs> See, a lot of us want to sugarcoat that, too. And it's my friend. <laughs> <laughs> but they cannot save you. The only way that we can live our lives more abundantly is through God. Yes. But how do we get to God? We have to receive by faith that Jesus Christ came and walked on the face of this earth, died on the cross for our sins, took those sins, cast them out to see a forgetfulness, and left. Now, Jesus got his heels kicked up, sitting on the right hand of God. Yeah. But he left us with a comforter. Mm -hmm. That comforter is the Holy Ghost. Yeah. The Holy Ghost is here now to save our souls so we can do exactly what we need to do in order to live life more abundantly. Yeah. See, it's not that difficult once you understand that in order to receive this thing, you've got to have faith. Yeah. If you've got to have faith, that means for all I trust him. Let me say that again. For all I trust him. What's the second Hallelujah. word? What's the second word? All. For all I yeah. trust him. So if we are trusting God with everything, we have no reasons to look for nothing. If we are trusting God for everything, we have no reason to look for nothing. Somebody heard that. I ain't going to look for nothing. I have no reason to. I have surrendered to the will of God. I have allowed God to use me as a vessel. I do it every day. My wife and Pastor Bowden say, you preach every day. Let me tell you something. If I did not do that on the radio every day, I would be lost. God has given each and every one of us a purpose. He has given us a vision. He has given us a mission. He has given us responsibility. Why is God people overlooking the importance of living our lives more abundantly? I don't understand it. I don't understand it. Before I sit down this wonderful day, I told you I didn't have to run up and down the aisles and shout. I don't have to do all that. Uh-uh. I'm hot enough. I'm trying to hold some of it. I'm trying to hold some of this in. But let me tell you something. God has given each and every one of us a responsibility. And we all ain't been called to preach. We all ain't been called to teach. Some of us ain't been called to sing in the choir. 
<laughs> Some of us ain't been called to be uh, the hospitality committee. Some of us ain't been called to usher. But God has something strategically planned for everyone in this room. The best part, the only person that can do it is you. The only one that can get it done is you. God has placed something in your heart, in your mind, in your spirit, and in your soul. And the only one that can see it through is you. Believe me when I tell you. I know for a fact, two years ago, you tell me I was going to be standing up here talking about God, I would have told you something. And it wouldn't have been nice. I'm just keeping it real. I know for a fact that when I came out of my mother's womb, I didn't walk out saying, I'm going to be a preacher. No. Absolutely not. As a matter of fact, I'd have cussed at you if you'd have told me I was going to be singing in the choir. But Lord, the, the Lord led me to not just sing, but direct. And lead my family in that same direction. Not one, but all of us singing for the glory of God. Amen. They say it starts at home. Let me tell you something. It started a few thousand years ago. It didn't just start at home. It started a few thousand years ago. And if we want to receive and believe that God has abundant living for each and every one of us, put the material things away. When I got up here, what did I do? I preached and asked God to remove self and him take control. You want to live life and live life more abundantly? Put the material things aside. Amen, amen. Stop focusing on that car. I got to get yes. that $300 outfit yes. when your light bill getting ready to get turned off. I got to buy the new pair of shoes and ain't got no gas in your car. Come on, somebody. If we want to receive, we have to believe that God is who he says he is, and he is going to do the things that he says he's going to do. Uh, yes, yes. By faith, I am healed. For all I trust him. Let's stand to your feet and give God some praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you. I know for a fact that God is going to do something in life. Hallelujah. If God has done anything for you, just take a few minutes out of your time to give God some praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I thank God that I didn't have to shout. I've been here. But for those of you that don't know, it's been an honor, a privilege, and a blessing because I learned something. I think when pastors and preachers get up and they begin to let the Holy Spirit use them, that means the Holy Spirit has something stored for them also. Amen. And through that message and through that word, I kid you not, I have learned something. And I can take something, I can grab a hold of it and take it home with me today. I'm grateful for each and every one of you just hearing what it is that God had in store for you. And I hope and pray that you have seen and or heard something that will keep you encouraged to continue to do the work of the Lord. Amen. God bless you. God bless you.